Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Hello, student. Welcome to History and Government Form 3. We are having a lesson in establishment of colonial rule in Kenya. That is the second topic. And today we are going to look at the process. The process of partition. leading to uh, the Kenyan territory, the process of partition. So before we, we, we discuss that, let us have an overview of what we learned in our previous lesson. Can you be able to remember what we learned in our previous lesson as an introduction to this topic, establishment of colonial rule in Kenya? We mentioned that there were different European powers or many European powers that were competing to get the East African territory, one of which is Kenya. That is which we are discussing in our lesson today. So which are these nations that were competing to get the East African territories? Are you able to remember them? We talked of... Uh, Germany, there was Britain, there was Portugal, there was Italy. So these are European powers that were competing to get these uh, uh, East African territories. And then uh, we made a step further and mentioned the reasons or the factors that encouraged or motivated the British nation to come and colonize or occupy Kenya. We discussed several reasons why the British came to colonize Kenya. Are you able to remember them? The reasons why the British came to occupy Kenya. We mentioned the first one was uh, to protect the source of river Nile because uh, it was strategic for the, for, the, for the British to control Egypt, which was a desert. That is the first reason, this, to protect the source of river Nile. And then number two, we also said that uh, Kenya was of strategic importance to protect the interest of Britain in India. I hope you remember that. And then number three, they were sourcing for raw materials they were looking for raw materials for the industries in britain and then number four they were looking for markets for finished products the industries in britain uh, remember britain was the first country to industrialize it was the first european power to industrialize so it produced a lot of goods industries were adopting the factory system. That is, they were producing goods on a large scale. So they had a lot of goods to sell. Uh, and Af uh, Kenya provided a very good market, a ready market. Kenyans were ready. Our, uh, the people who were living in Kenya at that time were ready to buy these products. That is to look for a uh, uh, source for market and then another reason was to protect the british nationals protect the british nationals who are uh, who are living in kenya that is the missionaries and the settlers who had also come uh, to uh, to to settle and also engage in trading activities the next reason was to abolish uh, slave trade to abolish slave trade and establish a legitimate trade which was the other reason the other reason was to for prestige acquiring a, 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 a colony or kenya as a colony was for the prestige of the people the other reason was to invest the surplus capital they had gotten uh, so they needed to uh, to get a place where they could invest their wealth invest their money so that they could even make more uh, profits 
and then also another reason was also to uh, to settle find a place to settle uh, the European population uh, the uh, Kenyan Kenya was a very good place where the European could settle and then lastly we mentioned that uh, the independence of the USA was another factor or reason why the European or the British wanted to occupy Kenya. So they had to compensate after they lost um, USA after its independence. Now, we let us make a step further and look at how they occupied or the process of the division of the East African uh, Af East African territory and the British occupying uh, specifically Kenya. So I've mentioned the biggest rivals for uh, the, 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 the British were, were, were the Germans at the coast. So uh, uh, after the Berlin conference that happened in 1884, after the Berlin conference, uh, we had uh, a lot of competition between Germany and Britain. So uh, the British, through uh, Sir Harry, Sir Harry Johnston, uh, came first and uh, uh, came first and made a uh, treaties. They made, or he made treaties with. Uh, the African chiefs, Harry Johnson made treaties with the African, there is an E. Harry Johnson made treaties with the African chiefs to safeguard the interests of the British. So the British were, uh, were uh, wanted to establish a railway, a railway into the interior of, uh, of the Kenyan of, of the East African coast. So he came and made treaties with the intention that the British could be coming to get. At the same time, uh, there was, after him, there came another uh, another person who was Carl Peters. So uh, Carl Peters also came at the same time and made treaties with uh, the people or with the chiefs around Mount Kilimanjaro. He came and made treaties with uh, the people or the chiefs around Mount Kilimanjaro. He made uh, treaties with uh, the chiefs of Usaga. He made treaties with the uh, uh, the chief of Uzigua. He made a treaty with the chief of Ukami and Guru. That uh, and Guru. So he made those treaties with the chiefs. And remember, from your Form 1 work, for you to get uh, a, 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 a pass to, into the interior, you had to consult with the Sultan. The Sultan would give you introductory letters. So, initially, Sir Harry Johnson was given introductory letters by the Sultan. But now, because the Germans were competing against the British, so... Carl Peters came and made those territories with the chiefs that I've already mentioned. That is the chief of Uzigua, the chief of Usaga, the chief of Ukami, and the chief of uh, Guru without the consul or without consulting Sultan. So this brought about some problems because Sultan did not allow or had not given the Germans the go ahead. So this brought uh, 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 about uh, some uh, some struggles between the British and and uh, and the Germans. So when Karl Peters went back to Germany, the Chancellor uh, acknowledged the treaties that they had made that he had made with the African chiefs. On the other hand, Sir Harry Johnson, the British did not back him up. So there was a kind of a struggle in between them. So this led to a conflict. And in, 18, uh, in 1886, there was an agreement they had to do because they had agreed in the Berlin Conference 
to uh, to, to, to have uh, um, an amicable way of solving issues. So they made the first uh, agreement, which we are going to refer to as the Anglo, or that was referred to as the Anglo-German German Treaty, which was made in 1886. This was made between the, uh, the British and the Germans, and these were the terms of that treaty. The first one, uh, the Sultan. Remember, now we have these these three groups that are 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 are, are warring or are competing against each other. The Sultan is controlling the coast. Remember, this is an Arab. He's controlling the coast, and he has or he has been having the rights of introducing people into the interior so he still wants to control the coast and then we have Karl Peters representing the Germans and then we have the British also coming into the picture so that conflict resulted to them signing the Anglo-German treaty or the first treaty that was referred to as the Anglo-German treaty so the first term was that the Sultan of Zanzibar so we are looking at the terms the terms of that treaty. So the first one is that the Sultan was to be left be left with the 16 kilometer or the 10 mile which is equal to 10 mile coastal strip. So the Sultan was to be left with that strip and then also he was given uh, the offshore streets uh, the sultan was also to take control sultan was also take control of the uh, of the islands of the islands of Pate, zanzibar the islands of Pate, zanzibar and also uh, Mafia, Pemba, and Lam. Mafia, Pemba, and Lam. So the Sultan was, apart from being given this stripe at the coast, uh, or the, the, the strip at the coast, uh, he was also uh, uh, he was also to take control of the islands of Zanzibar. Pate, Mafia, Pemba, and Lam. That was the second term. The third one, uh, Germany, was to get the territory uh, between uh, River Umba and River Vumba. River Umba and River Ruvuma. So Germany was given that strip or that territory between River Umba, that is at the coast, and also River Ruvuma. And then uh, uh, it was also given the coastline of uh, Witu. It was also given the coastline. Coastline of Witu was given to the Germans. And then uh, lastly, uh Germany or uh, Britain got the territory Britain got the territory uh, from uh, River Umba going northwards was to get between River Umba up to River uh, Juba that is in the uh, along the Somali coast that is towards the north so, those are Juba. Those are the terms that they agreed upon. So each uh, or the, the East African coast, you could go and get a map so that you can able to get uh, from your maps, you will be able to see uh, specifically where are these uh, positions on the map uh, that uh, they agreed upon. So those are the, uh, the, 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 the the terms that they agreed upon. So as you can notice, this was just along the East African coast. But now, towards the interior, it was left 
hanging there was no agreement on how they are going to to be to to, to be sharing so the north or the interior of east africa was left hanging so that was another cause of conflict immediately after they have agreed going forward companies were were were, were instituted to make sure that um the interest of the germans and the interest of the british are taken care of the british uh contracted or got the the the, the, the services of the imperial british east african company to uh to take these or to take control of the territory that they had been given on the other hand the ja the germans uh got the uh the services of the german east african company which was led by carl peters at that time so these companies were given the responsibility of 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 getting more territory and administering the territories that they had been given so that led to more conflicts so in the interior as they took or as they continued to to expand carl peters was the first to reach to uganda and he made a, 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 a he made a, a, a treaty or made a, a, an agreement with uh with kabaka to protect him so by the time the british were coming towards the interior and remember i said the british were so much concerned with protecting uh the source of river nile so by the time they were coming to get this territory it had uh they had uh, the Bri the germans had already made an agreement with kabaka so they could not be able to get the art territory so that brought about another conflict between the germans and the uh and the british which necessitated another uh, another treaty to be signed so they signed another treaty that was referred to as the second the second anglo anglo german treaty which was also referred to as heligo land treaty this was signed in 18 90 it was signed in 1890 so this was uh, also to bring uh, a, a time of peace between the germans and and the and the the british so these are the the agreements that they made or the terms that they made the first one uh, uganda was left uganda was recognized as a british a british sphere of influence uganda was recognized as a british sphere of influence and then uh, germany agreed to abandon her claim over her territory of witu she also accepted british protectorate over ireland so German, Germany abandoned Witu or the territory of Witu and also recognized that the British were to take over the islands of uh, Zanzibar and the island of uh, Pemba and then uh, Germans got uh, germans got the heligoland heligoland that was very uh that was very uh influential and then the sultan sultan was left was left with the 10 mile strip with the 10 mile strip with the 10 mile strip and then the western 
western boundary of Uganda and Tanganyika and uh, not Tanganyika and over Uganda and uh, Uganda and Tanganyika were defined and then lastly uh, German took possession took possession of part of part of lake part of lake uh, Tanganyika part of lake Tanganyika Tanganyika from the British at a cost so these conflicts were the events that led to Kenya becoming a protectorate. So with these agreements, Uganda becoming part of a uh, uh, part of uh, 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 of being declared the British sphere of influence. Now the British could control the whole area from the coast, uh, almost 300 kilometers inside, right, uh, up to Uganda. Now that became part of the British. Uh, uh, the British uh, sphere of influence and finally they came or uh, it was declared the British protectorate. So those are the events that uh, led to, uh, to, to Kenya becoming a colony or becoming a colony of British. So you could go and get some more literature. You can use, you can read uh, in your KLB there is more literature on that explaining more, but uh, I, I just needed you to get these specific terms of the agreements that were made between the, uh, the British and the Germans in acquiring, uh, in acquiring the, in acquiring the, uh, the Kenyan territory. So as we end our lesson today, uh, could you be able to attempt this revision? Question. And the question is identify identify the terms of the agreements of the agreements made. by the British and the Germans. Identify the terms of the agreements made by the British and the Germans. So that is the question I want you to attempt. And now you should be able to differentiate. That is the Anglo-German Treaty of 1886 and the second Anglo-German Treaty or, that, or which is also known as the Heligoland Treaty of uh, 1890. And with that, I'm sure you have learned quite a new thing today and I hope you have enjoyed the lesson today. It's bye-bye from me.